Hey Rhythm Guitar Rockers, this is Mark Turco from RhythmGuitarLessons.net and today I got a great video for you about triads. Recently I was on a YouTube live stream with my friend Tommaso Zilio and the topic came up about triads. Tommaso had a fantastic explanation of what triads are, how they're built, shows you examples of them, how you could use them, and why they're actually better to learn first before learning bar chords. Yeah, you see, I think most people have this unhealthy obsession with the bar chords. You know, like the, all those beginners, they start and they play the open string chords, and that's great. Do that. They open up a lot of space, a lot of possibility, a lot of space, a lot of music. And then they go straight into, I need to play bar chords. And those are much harder to play. Now, on an electric, I'm easier, of course, but on an acoustic, for instance, they're much harder to play cleanly. And um, yeah, they open, you have more chords, you can open up more, more songs, but still, uh, I think it's not the right moment to start bar chords, not immediately at least, okay? Um, because bar chords are useful if you really have a chord that you cannot play with open strings, huh? and at the same time, you are the only instrument in the band. So for instance, if it's just a guitar and voice, so for that, they are useful. But if you are not, if there is a rest and, and some band around, if you have a, if you have a bass player, if you have a piano player, if you have somebody else playing with you, some, if you have another guitar player who's already playing the bar chord, you are much better off learning the chords uh, as distributed on the first three strings, for instance, or on the second three strings. So you can play this stuff higher on the fretboard and still cut through the mix, still be heard and not just play. Okay. So yes, definitely. The, the three no the, the three string triad are absolutely fundamental. If people don't know what I'm they're talking about, I can explain in a moment. But before do, doing that, okay. These are absolutely fundamental. They are this, they are good as they are. They make you understand the fretboard. They are easier to play than the bar chords. My, I mean, any beginner can play those triads, technically. Okay, while a bar chord requires a lot of strength on the index finger, those other triads here don't, re doesn't, don't require nearly any strength or nearly any technique. They're simpler shape than the open string chords. You just need to know where to put them. They sound better and they're a starting point for a number of subsequent developments so that with those triads you can play better rhythms, so you can create uh, extended chords like add nine, add 11, all these kind of things, seventh chord, etc. You can even solo. With the bar chords, you cannot do any of that. But that's the sales pitch, okay? <laughs> I mean, I'm not selling anything, of course, right now. I mean, it's uh, it, it, I'm just telling you, that would be the best way to go, okay? I'm selling you on this path, as opposed to learn the bar chords. Now, do I mean that you should never learn the bar chord? No, learn them later. But once you know some of those shapes here, like you were saying, by co like compounding the shape together, you get the bar chord. You have this shape, this shape, this shape, put them together, you practically have the bar chord. Yeah, and then they understand where the bar chord comes from. It's just not this finger pattern that they have to memorize Exactly. They learn the fundamentals of what the chord is and the structure of it and, you know, everything like that and the different variations of it across the strings. And then when we put it all together, they have a better understanding of what a bar chord is instead of just some abstract thing. So, mm -hmm. but the, 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 the three string triad. What are those? Well, a uh, triad is a chord made of three notes, okay? Like C major, D minor, all those kind of chords. You already have all those if you know the open string chords, you already can play triads, because those are all triads. They're made of three notes, okay? The only thing we are doing is to play those three notes on three strings, up higher the fretboard, okay? To do that, it's best if you know where are the notes on the fretboard. That would be the, the easiest way, but otherwise you can just learn the shapes. It's really not that hard to do, okay? So, for instance, if you want to play a C major chord, Okay, a C major chord is made by the, by the notes C, E, and G. Okay, that's basic theory, which doesn't mean it's simple, it means it's basic. 
Okay, and if you don't know it, no problem. But if you know it already, that's basic. Okay, and then if you need help with the basic theory, write it in the chat. I can give you a couple of links. But anyway, the C major chord is made by C, E, and G. If you play a C note, an E note, and a G note at the same time, you are playing a C major chord. When you are playing a C chord here with open strings, you are playing those three notes only. You're just repeating the same note because we have E, open string, C, E, G, C, and E. So you're only playing C, E, and G, but you are repeating those notes. But you, just, you need only three strings to play that. One string is going to play C, one string is going to play E, one string is going to play G. So you pick three strings any three strings, three strings cl close by, three strings far apart, any, any combination, and you try to find a C, an E, and a G. At the beginning, we can do this on the top three strings. So for instance, you can play a C, an E, and a G. Then playing uh, the third string and the fifth, at the fifth fret, and it's a C, the second string at the fifth fret, and it's an E, and the first string at the third fret, and it's a G. OK, how do I know? that those notes are C, E, and G, I learned my notes on the fretboard. But if you don't, you can always find a diagram, or I can send you one if you tell me, yeah, a diagram with all the notes on all the strings and all the frets. So I'm just playing a C, an E, and a G. So that's that chord. It's a C major. But I can play them in different orders. So if I move up higher the fretboard, I can find an E here, which is the uh, third string, fret number nine. A G here on the second string fret number eight, and a C note here on the E on the first string fret number eight. So nine, eight, eight. And that's another C chord. Now the order of the note is different. It's E, G, C. But there are still the same three notes. Just in a different order. If you know this already, it's gonna become more complex later. If you don't know this already, relax. You can always rewatch this live stream later, okay, and go step by step. If you need help, write me or Mark, okay? So, a C chord, and that's a C chord. But I can still move up, up higher the fretboard and play again those three notes in a different order. So you can have this G here at the, on the third string 12th fret, this C here on the second string 13th fret, and this E here on the first string, 12th fret. It's harder to spell it this way than actually playing it. But you have this shape here, okay? And that's another C chord. So I have this position for the C chord, this position for the C chord, and this position for the C chord. It's still a C chord. Then I can go up higher and keep doing the same thing. Everything repeats 12th frets higher. So if you have a shape here, if you move it 12 frets higher, it's still a C chord. If you like that video, you're going to love this brand new e-guide that's totally free. The link is in this video's description, or you can go to rhythmguitarlessons.net forward slash capital P, lowercase r, lowercase o.